something in your heart and in your mind that you feel that the Lord is talking to you about, or you something you need to share, or something you need clarity on, feel free to ask me. That's what I'm here for. This is Bible study. I'm not preaching to you. I am teaching. So when mm -hmm. you, when a teacher teaches, they expect the class to participate. Now, if you got a cough, sniffle, sneeze, or any of those things, then you can just mute your microphone, please. And thank you. So anyway, the topic is there's only one God and only one way. And the way I came up with this topic, <clears throat> the Lord was, excuse me, he was convicting my mind, pricking my mind with these thoughts of these pastors that say they love the Lord, but are connected in some way or another with darkness. Um, and, and the way I say that is I say it carefully, but I want everybody to understand it doesn't matter what your title is. If you're not living for the Lord, then some way, form or fashion, what's done in the darkness, what does this Bible say? Come, come, to to light. Light. come to the light. Come to the light. Absolutely. So it behooves you to be saved. <laughs> it behooves everybody that's professing salvation to live that life, the life that you speak about. If you're not living that life, then you need to do everything in your power to maintain all that you can when it comes to Christ. Don't be pretending. As the old folks used to say, don't play with the don't play with the Holy Ghost. You can't play with God. Yep. That's right. Absolutely cannot play with God. So this, God gave me this topic and I'm like, God, why can't you let me move on from this? He said, when they, he gave me grandpa's voice. He said, when they get that, then we'll move on to something new. Mm -hmm. So the topic is there's only one God and only one way. And so the scripture that came to me was Exodus 32 and one. Exodus 32 and 1. And he it? says, sure. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. So who can tell me about that story? Just briefly, what happened? Why did Moses go into the mountain? Get instructions. He yeah, went to God the mountain. God called him up to the mountain. Absolutely, to get instructions from God. So God mm -hmm. had been speaking to Moses about leading his people out of the wilderness into the promised land. And this is exactly what pastors do. They're mm -hmm. supposed to lead the people of God from the wilderness to the promised land. A lot of us, I've been to a lot of churches and I, I am not knocking churches, but the Bible says you will know the tree by the what? The fruit of blueberries. So if you're bearing blueberries, you're not a tree, you're a bush. If you're blooming apples and you say you're an orange tree, I don't care how much you want to believe you're orange, you're an apple tree. Absolutely, mm -hmm. right, right. That's wrong. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I've been to several churches where I go in and all of the saints just look dry, thirsty, and hungry. That's and I'm truth. looking around, they clapping and they just, oh, they doing all this, but I don't see no spirit. I don't Neither. feel no anointing. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at me, wondering what is wrong with me? Why can't, I mean, they just, <laughs> I'm, look, they look so happy, but their faces, when I look at their spirit and I look in their eyes, I right. see no life. So you tell me what's wrong. Am I the problem? Nope. If I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, I know God's anointing is on my life and I go into this church service and everything in there feels dry. Do I have a problem? Nope. Why not? They don't have yeah, you do. No spirit. Somebody said I do. Mother Talbert says I don't. So I don't think you don't either. They have a problem. They Why? have a problem. Yeah, big time. Why would you <laughs> think they have a problem? Yep. 
because their um their um no what call it? their their spirit is I mean there's no they're they're swept clean. There's nobody there's nothing living there. Absolutely. Right. And there's a, a scripture Say it one more time. They have a form of godness. Yes. yes. And denying the power thereof. There you That's go. It. There's a form of godliness and they're denying the power thereof. And so when these people, we can go in God's edifice, we can clap our hands, we can sing hallelujah, we can fall out and blow bubbles. But if we do not have God's anointing, if there is no, as old folks say, ain't no oil, Right. And there is not going to be any power. And we are just doing all of these things for no reason. We're doing all of these things and there's no power. We're doing all of these things and no demons are being cast out. And where do demons dwell? In dry places. There you yeah. go. So when you go to a place and you don't feel any anointing, you don't feel any power, you don't feel God's spirit, know that God's spirit is not there, especially if you know God's spirit is in you. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Does someone have something to say? Okay. So what is the first, you need something, baby? What's wrong? Okay, I have to move the microwave. What is the first commandment that God gave? Who could tell? I should have another no Bible no, no, no. I was, I was concerned. I'm like, where are my Bible scholars? <laughs> yes. He said, right. thou shall have no other God before me. What does that mean? Does that mean that there can be other gods? Yes. As long yes. as they don't go before God? Right. Yes. Does that mean that we can worship other gods? No. No, we no. can't worship no. them. Uh -uh. What does it mean? Well, like you can love other things like you might like if you're married, you might love your spouse, you might love your children, but you don't put them before God. There That's you go. True. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So there are yeah. things that take precedence that are um, dominantly reigning in your life, but they should not take precedence over God. Now, who can give me an instance when God got your attention because you forgot to put him first? Huh? Oh, I got it. Hmm. I have one. Okay. I ended up taking this trip and God told me not to go. And when I oh, got there, when I say everything went wrong, <laughs> and it, was, it, it wasn't this Miami trip. It was a trip before that where there were a bunch, I told you this before, I think, where I was with some young people and they were all supposedly saved. They all supposedly loved the Lord, but God told me I couldn't go. And I was like, well, no, they saved, I can go. And when I got there, while they party club did whatever they wanted to do, the matriarch of the household came downstairs and saw me. She said, you ain't going nowhere. She said, God told you not to come here with these people. And the Holy Ghost is telling me you going to prayer service. Go get her a dress and go get you a skirt out the closet. And I had this old lady skirt <laughs> that was down to my toes. And I ended up at prayer service. God got my attention. Why? Why did that happen to me? Because I and my heart love God. I didn't want to do wrong. I honestly wanted to live saved. But at the same time, I was being human. In my mind, I'm like, well, I want to I kick it with the young people too. I want to do some things like they do too. But God got my attention and he let me know, I called you for a specific purpose. You can't do everything everybody else does. This anointing is on your life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to preserve you and make sure that you know who you are because I love them, because I love them. So when the people saw that Moses was gone so long and coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, come make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. And how many times have we been in a situation where we feel like, okay, God, you're taking too long to answer me. So I'm going to contact this person or that person. I'm going to call my cousin, my auntie, my uncle. You try to call people to comfort 
that feeling inside of you or to satisfy what you have in your heart when all you have to do is seek God and wait on him. When you get ahead of God, you will end up creating an idol of something or someone. That's what this passage is telling you. Do you understand where I'm going? Mm -hmm. All right. God's people struggled with faithfulness to him. They didn't know how to be faithful. And in this day and time, can we relate to that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. There are a lot of times when we want things, we desire things from God. And when it doesn't happen right away, sometimes we'll go to alternatives. We'll find ourselves in situations or as they say, for dink dinks because we didn't trust God. We didn't wait on him. We didn't have enough faith to know that God loved us enough to give us his best. In their fickleness, impatience, and lack of faith, they quickly turned to temptation to worship as other nations did. This time, it was by creating a golden calf representing Baal to worship. But over time, scripture mentions other gods that they worship too. You guys know the other gods that they worshiped? Ash, Ash mm-hmm. something. Oh, Asherah? Yeah. Okay, and what was the one with the head that rolled off? Oh, yeah. Um, Starts with a D. Thank God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God was like, slap. (laughs) Knocked the head right off of him. (laughs) And there was another one that was called Chemosh. And then what was the big one that the Israelites kept going back to where they sacrificed their children? Wasn't that Baal? Baal, but the, the name of the God specifically, Baal was a guy where they would cut. That God uh, was a blood sacrifice God. Beelzebub? <laughs> Starts with an M. Oh, M. You talking about the God of Moloch? Yes, I am. Now, one, one of those gods still exists and is still worshipped big time in the United States of America and in Europe. Moloch? Who? What Sister Dee Dee said? Don't be scared. <laughs> which which one of the gods? Come on, say it loud. Say it loud. You think it's Moloch? Because Why do you think it's Moloch? Because I remember you mentioning um, a, a few Thursdays, Tuesdays ago that the celebrities, they um, either they send their kids through the fire or they turn to the other side as far as gender gender is concerned yeah gender is concerned well um, for a um, if you look at a 16th century description of uh, god mullet do you remember prince putting on these glasses that had two eyes here and an eye right here mm-hmm. well apparently well i'll tell you what have you seen um have you seen the, the the man with the like the moose face and the man body? The Egyptian god, Ra. The people. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they call this the uh they call this the third eye. Mm-hmm. That uh-huh. was the god of Molech was supposed to be known for Molech. three three different eyes. Hmm. And so when you see people covering their one eye, they're letting you know that they're actually seeing out of the third one, which represents the god Moloch. And that in some way, form, or fashion that they've offered a sacrifice. Yep. So in ancient times, they couldn't get away from worshiping this idol god. And I'm like, I said to myself, I said, what is it that is so fascinating about this idol god that continue to bring attraction? What was it about this idol god where you would want to give your firstborn son or firstborn daughter to a god and burn them in the fire? What is it where people would offer their children as sacrifices. Why would they do that? Do you all know why? Mm-mm. What nope. does the enemy, what does the enemy offer? What are some of the things that he offers? What did he offer Jesus? The world. Fame. Fame. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Riches. 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 Yep. What else? Power. Fortune, fame, fortune, riches, and those same things that the enemy offered Jesus back then. I will give those angels charge over you. If you just cast yourself mm-hmm. off the mountain. He's got mm-hmm. demonic forces. So if he cast, if he fall down, that they would uh, kick him. You know? He sure did. He absolutely yeah. did. But he wanted to assign his demonic spirits to do that so that Jesus will give the power, the authority to him. And how many of you all know that's a lie? Yep. So yeah. even though the enemy yeah. may offer fame, he may offer fortune, he may offer these things, all of these things come from who? The true and living God. The true and living God. So does that mean as Christians, we won't be tempted? No, no. Jesus was tempted. No, we got to be tempted. I want you to say that loud because people who are in church, who are sanctified, who love the Lord, we're the first ones to condemn, convict, and and just charge people to hell for being tempted. And we got to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. And we'll even do that to ourselves. We'll convict ourselves and be like, you know, I just, I don't know. I thought I was saved. Well, if you love the Lord with all of your heart and you're doing everything in your power to live for the Lord, you don't think you're supposed to be tempted? No. You don't think the enemy is going to do everything in his power to try to distract you? Yep. Yep. That's what he's going to do. That's Absolutely. his job. That's his job. You, yeah. you think you're better than Jesus? Nope. Uh-huh. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions or comments so far? Okay. So third of Exodus, what? 32 and 1. Exodus 32 and 1. It's in the oh. chat. What other gods might Christians be tempted to bow down to today? We've already uh said that. Uh bow down to fame, to fortune, to financial stability if somebody tells you you know what you just join this group then we'll make sure that you'll never be without at least six figures i was told that i was having a hard time at this job oh i was having a hard time and the district state came in and said you know what we're closing this school down we're going to dissolve it and we're going to merge it with uh normandy so while i was closing down this school was the last month it was, I didn't know where my next job was going to come from because of course, if a school closes down and you're the last standing principal, even though I brought my students up three, two and three grade levels, who does that in a year's time? It didn't matter. I was the last standing principal. And so because of that, I was like, God, I don't know where I don't know where my next job is going to come from. I've been seeking for job after job. And everybody knew the history of the job where I came from, but they didn't know where it was, where I brought it. And so this man comes in from the street out of the blue. He doesn't know me from anywhere. And he says, well, you know, you can always join the sisterhood and they'll take good care of you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to lie. I started thinking, I was like, well, hmm, I wouldn't have to worry about a job. And he said, We got jobs in every state. You can move wherever you want. I knew it was the devil then because I hadn't told anybody that I was considering moving. And I said, "Mm -hmm. I know what this is the devil. He's trying to entice me. And so when the man finished what he had to say, I said, there's no organization. There's no group. There's no elite anything that can make me turn my back on God. And he said, okay, 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 suit yourself, all right. I said, yeah, go on back out the way you came in. And I began to rebuke the devil. So how about that happened again? (laughs) I get to another job and things are just going haywire. It's a setup for the enemy. And I want you all to understand when things start going crazy in your life and it just seems like there's no consistency, everything is going haywire, That is the devil. Mm -hmm. He wants you to believe 
that there is no way that God can hear you. There's no way God can help you. There's no way he can assist you. He wants you to believe that. This young lady came to me. She said, you know, you would make a pretty Delta. I said, uh -huh. and I kept on moving. <laughs> I took my two good legs that God gave me and took myself right on out that door because I know that the word of God tells me not to do that. Mm -hmm. He is a liar. Absolutely, he is a liar. So Jesus said to Satan, what did he say to Satan when the devil said, worship the Lord, when the Satan said, bow down before me? What did Jesus say to him? Did he say, hmm, let me think about it. He said, get, a, get behind me. Be behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. Yes, he mm -hmm. said, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only oh. you know, the devil you had to worship your lord your god and him mm -hmm. only i'm not supposed to worship you you lying so before we are tempted to think of god's ancient people in a bad light we have to realize that the devil tempted even jesus jesus to worship other gods in the modern new covenant age we live in we are tempted every day to look outside of the providence and provision of god for something the world promises to give us what can the world give us that God can't give better? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, I was just checking. In fact, the world will always tempt us to believe we are entitled to certain things, such as amenities and circumstances. When we genuinely seek to obey it with all our hearts, the first commandment guards us against falling for those lies. In modern times, Dolores Smith wrote, this commandment is a warning against elevating money, or otherworldly things to God-like status in our lives. And even the old folks, when, when uh, people would have babies, do you remember what they would say to them? They say, don't love that baby too much. Love that baby more than you love God. God will take that baby away from you. She and I used to be like, don't say that. Don't, don't take my baby. Yeah. I say, don't say that. I never understood why they said that. Why they say that? Mm -hmm. But God doesn't want us to have anything before him. My, my, my dad, I was just crying over my husband. I just could not get over that pain. And it still hurts to this day. Mm -hmm. but, but it was a point to where my dad just said, you love your husband more than you love God. And I was so mad at him. And I was like, how can you say that to me? How can you stand there and say that to me? He said, because you will not allow God to heal you. He said, you will rather sit there and wallow in your grief than to allow God to be who he is and heal you. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. What could I say? Yep. It hurt. Boy, that hurt. It felt like he just punched me in my jaw. <laughs> but I got a double punch. Yes. Uh -huh. And, and and I had to be honest I did I love my husband more than I love God I did I put him before everything and I had to repent of that thank you Jesus for revealing that to me right. can you imagine lifting your eyes up in hell and think you know you're thinking you're doing everything right and then you find out, well, you love something more than you love God. That's why we're down here with all the demons and killers and murderers and liars and child molesters and all these people. Because you put something or someone before God. That's dangerous. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a few scriptures. We're going to. I'm going to give you a few scriptures. Okay. that show you the consequences for placing something or someone over God. Number one, you'll lose your mind. Mm -hmm. You ever notice a lot of people in the church, um, you see them one minute and the next minute, their mind just doesn't seem quite right. Mm -hmm. That's according to Romans 1 and 28. It says, even as they did mm -hmm. not like to retain God in their knowledge, meaning that they didn't continue to study and learn about God. They didn't mm -hmm. want to keep, uh -uh, don't talk to me about God right now. I'm mad. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. I'm disappointed. 
I didn't get what I wanted. Don't talk to me about God. So when they didn't retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. That means you, your mind is gone. To do those things which are not convenient. If something is not convenient for you, what does that mean? It's not for you. It's going to put you out of your way. It's going to stress mm -hmm. you in every way possible. It's going to frustrate you. It's going to disappoint you because it's not convenient. It's just like me having two bags of groceries in my hand. And then you come to me with a third bag and say, here, hold this one. Is that convenient for me? No. Nope. So that's what you do to yourself when you don't retain knowledge of God, when you don't keep the word of God in you, when you don't listen to God, when you don't read the word, when you don't pray, when you don't fast, then everything that is in your mind that has been keeping you in perfect, pe perfect peace begins to unfold. You hearing what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Mind begins to unravel. Okay, Second Thessalonians. The second thing it does, it causes you to be delusional. What does it mean to be delusional? When you play something or someone before God, you become delusional. What does delusional mean? Believe a lie and be damned. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with me. I used to tell Crystal, your shoes are on the wrong feet. She was a little girl. And she said, uh-uh, my shoes are just fine. Feet be like this. <laughs> She was, was there, um, was there a, a, a verse to that scripture? Yes, 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, 10th through the 12th verse. I was going to read it in just a minute. So that's, that's okay. It. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, so you'll die, because they received not the love of the truth. They would rather you tell them a lie. They would rather you tell me, uh-uh, don't call me a girl. I'm a boy. I was born a girl, but in my heart and my spirit, I've been a boy all my life. They would rather you tell them a lie and believe a lie, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. There are people who actually believe a lie and they get angry at you because you can't understand why you can't you can't understand why you can't see what they see. And I, I'm not bashing homosexuals and lesbians, but that's a prime example. When you all see right. someone who is a woman, you've been calling them Patrice all of their life. And all of a sudden Patrice decides to be Patrick and she wants you to call her a he. Delusional, mm -hmm. right? Y'all following all right. me? All mm -hmm. right. I know I'm hitting hard and strong, but I got to tell you the truth or God's going to get me. Your DNA still says that you are genetically a woman, but you became delusional because you placed yourself before God. Mm -hmm. There was a young judgment. Huh? At judgment, that's it's a at judgment. That's what you what you're going to be, whatever you were born as. That's why that's how you will see God at judgment day. Yes. Yes. Number three, you become abominable. You become abominable. What does it mean to be abominable? <clears throat> it's just that it's Extra just no whole point. If God just hates you. Extraordinarily nasty, gross, mm -hmm. just disgusting. Mm -hmm. When you put mm -hmm. something or someone before God. Before God. And that's why you're like, how can people become murderers or child molesters or how can they, they have a loving husband or a loving wife? How can they step out on them? Because you put yourself or something before God. It's just like walking in a, a completely, a place that's painted black at night with the lights out to find a doorway. Hmm. no way you can see y'all ever been in the basement trying to find your way up the stairs because somebody decided to turn the light out on you <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it is when you in, where you are putting something or someone before god the third the the third thing you fourth thing you become deceitful what does it mean to become deceitful jeremiah god i 
I didn't read Titus, did I? I'm sorry. Abominable. No. Titus 1 and 16. It says, they profess that they know God. So these are people that saying they say they're Christian. But in works, they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. That was that church I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. I'm saved, but I'll cuss you out. Uh -huh. I love the Lord, but I put that Bible down in a minute and fight. Don't pray. They got this T-shirt that says, "I'm a split between I'll pray for you and I'll shoot you." Uh. <laughs> You, and, and what does the Bible say about that? It says bitter and sweet cannot flow out of the same fountain. Right. The Bible right. said, God said he'd rather you be hot or cold. Oh. Yes. So let's go to deceitful. That's Jeremiah 9 and 6. It says, thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. That means you're surrounding yourself with people that's going to uphold your fantasy. That's going to uphold your lie. You start collecting people around you. That's going to help you to stay in the state that you're in. Hmm. And that's why so many people are in sin that are backslidden and can't come back. Because once they decide to come back to the Lord, girl, what you doing? The demon to whisper to their friend, say, call, give her a call. Girl, what you doing? I heard you went up there and got on that altar. What you think your little self was trying to do? You trying to be saved, girl. You know you up. Uh, you know you used to, girl, you know you still, or I had this happen to my goddaughter. They said, I heard you went up. She told her family. She was so excited. She said, I gave my life to the Lord, and God has been such a blessing to me. I have I've received a new job. God gave me a new car. And her own family said, parents, say, you too young to be saved. You live your life first. Hmm. Those are people that are surrounded in deceitfulness. And she said, you know what, Miss Angel and I was so hurt because my grandmother was Holy Ghost filled. We came from a sanctified church where we knew salvation, holiness or hell. There was no in between. And she said, for my parents that used to be saved, sanctified and Holy Ghost filled to tell me that I need to live my life first. She said that really confused me and it hurt me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you surround yourself around deceitfulness, you're not going to come out of that backslidden state. The Bible says to come out from among them and be ye separate. Among them and be ye separate. Who was them? Yeah. Sinners. But you people that Jesus, don't walk with Jesus Jesus. was with the wine bibbers and the alcoholics and the drunkards and 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 and, 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 and. why can't I? We're not Jesus. We're not all powerful. Our source comes from the Lord. You better say that. And Jesus was on assignment. I heard Sister Melody say that before. She said, yes, God delivered me from drugs and alcohol, but God hasn't assigned me to go back to the crack house and say, y'all need to be saved. Why? Because God knows he will not put more on us than what? We can He's not going to assign you to something that is going to cause you to sin. Right. All right. I made it clear. Um, when you place something or someone before God, you will become unclean. What does unclean mean? Sinful. That's Romans 1 and 24. Sinful, unholy. What else? You're in a backslidden, a backslidden state. Yes, in a backslidden state. Well, uh, unclean in the Bible, they could not present any animal that was unclean. That meant that it had diseases. So a lot of people who have AIDS, who have STDs, STIs, anything that is unclean in your body has to do with, it's a consequence of placing something or someone before God. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So is there a way that you can be delivered from that uncleanliness? Yes. It says, Jeremiah. No, that's Romans 1 and 24. 
Romans 1 and 24, it says, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, <coughs> excuse me, through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Lust of the heart, dishonoring your body. What is that referencing to? Dishonoring your, your body? Sodomy. Uh-huh. Getting drunk or drugs. Alcohol, drugs. Yes. Sleeping around. But I got your body. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So when you do the lust of your hearts, when you let the thing that's in your heart come into fruition and you start acting on those lusts, then you have, the Bible says that you will become unclean. And you can repent, you can ask God to heal you and deliver you and God will do just that. Our pastor prayed for a young man that was, he had turned his life to a life of, of frivolous, free sex. He slept with whomever he wanted. If it was a woman, then that's who he slept with. If it was a man, then that's who he slept with. He just had an insatiable, lustful demon. And my father did not look at him in the spirit of conviction. He didn't look at him like, Shoo boy, I don't know if I can help you. No, he said, you know what? I'm gonna pray for you. He said, but the first thing I want you to do is to humble yourself before God and repent. Tell God you're sorry. And he said, and don't you go back lest the worst thing comes upon you. And he said, when I pray for you, the AIDS that's in your body, you're going to be completely healed. He didn't have HIV. He had full-blown AIDS. And the doctor had given him a couple of days to live. <clears throat> and I think Mother Smith was in that van. And Mother McLemore, Elder Jones, and I think Mother Talbot was with them. I wish you would unmute Mother Tab. But they went and they prayed for this young man. And don't you know that God healed him? He healed him. You become corrupt. When you put something before God, or you put something or someone before God, you become corrupt. You become rotten. It's just like having an apple in a barrel. One apple can spoil a whole barrel because it's rotten. Right. So what happens when you become rotten, you start spoiling your family. You wonder why your kids are being bad or your nephews and nieces are starting to act out or your mother or father who was watching you start to act out. It's because you've become rotten. So you're infecting everyone around you. And God said he's going to hold us accountable for being stumbling blocks. Mm -hmm. Another consequence for placing something or someone above God, you become God's enemy. Do you want to be an enemy of God? No, Lord. I certainly don't. So no, the scripture for uh, the corrupt is 2 Timothy 3 and 8. And it says, now as Hannes and Ambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning faith. These two people turn a whole lot of people almost I think it was over a thousand people against Moses and they all ended up perishing because of these two people that said just like God could talk to Moses he could talk to us too uh -huh. you all remember that scripture you should uh -huh. look it up uh -huh. God's enemy Romans 8 7 and 8 because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God that means your mind is not subject to God's laws when your mind becomes carnal, when you start thinking about what you want to do instead of what right. God's will is, it is subject to the law, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. I don't want to be God's enemy. Mm -hmm. Number eight, you can't please God. And I just read that to you, Romans 8, 7 and 8. You can't please God. There's nothing you can do to make him happy. You can't, you can't outdance him you can't scream holler shout you may have the most beautiful voice but god will not be pleased with your singing he won't be pleased with your praise in whatever form you bring it and i don't know about you all but when god is in you 
and people get up there and they sing or they perform in any way, form or fashion, there's no anointing. It just sounds like, like, like somebody's taking nails and just scratching a chalkboard. <laughs> it doesn't sound good. It's like getting, as a little kid, you know, children are pure, so they can hear and feel things that we as adults typically typically can't. And I remember as a little child, people would get up there to sing, and it would just be, I would rather get a whooping. It felt like I was getting a whooping. And then when they finally would finish singing, I'd be sitting in my seat going, <sighs> following them to the seat. <laughs> it felt like that I got a whooping. Why? Because nothing that they did, please God, it was like a clashing symbol and tinkling brass. Can you imagine Imagine somebody just constantly crashing the cymbal? Mm -hmm. Who wants to hear no that? Mm -hmm. They perish. If you put something or someone before God, you will die. <laughs> that scripture is in Hosea 4 and 6. It says, for my people are destroyed for a lack oh, of, of knowledge. Yes, because they have rejected knowledge. I will also reject them that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So you wonder why your children are going through situations. You wonder why the children are being neglected. You wonder why they are suffering, why they are, don't do that. Sit down, move, find a place, because I'm ministering. When I finish, you can come talk to me. I'm sorry, I'm babysitting. You'll find out that your children will start suffering and it'll be because you've neglected God. So when you reject God, he'll reject you and your children. A lot of us are wondering why can't our children seem to get ahead? It just seems like they're suffering, like they're going through. You need to repent. Repent for your children. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's real, real easy for people to say, some people to say, you know what? They grown. I told them what they needed to do. And God is putting this scripture, Hosea 4 and 6, right back at you. Ouch. They become scornful. When you play something or someone over God, you become scornful. According to Proverbs 1 and 22, it says, how long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge? You start looking at this one saying, she ain't saved. He ain't saved. They ain't saved. The choir should have sang better. I think the usher should have gave me a, a, a fan by now. I wonder why the preacher ain't giving me a word. I need a word. You just become scornful. Everything, this church could be a lot bigger than this. You become scornful. Why? Because it's about you. You've placed something or someone over God. The last what, thing. Excuse me, Adrian. Uh-huh. Where, where was that found at in Proverbs? Proverbs, the first chapter and the 22nd verse. Okay. Thank in you. the chat. Huh? They're in the chat. Yep, all of the scriptures are in the chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Oakwood Clerk. Sister Linda, I appreciate you. And then the last thing is they become sleep. What does it mean when you become sleep? When you put something or someone before God, you become sleep. What does that mean when you sleep? Go ahead, mother. Resting. Mm-hmm. Comfortable in your skin. Comfortable. Mm -hmm. I know I'm saying. Yep. You can't tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're asleep, are you aware of what's going on around you? Nope. No. And the devil just stealing from you. He coming right in your house. Taking what's that one thing that Pastor Roosevelt Reed used to say? Uh -huh. Some people know what's going on, and I forget the other two. Some don't know. He says, some people are, know what's going on, and I, I think some people don't, and some people do. Right. But if you are that person that is sleeping, you feel like, wait, I just feel like I just can't get to God. I can't hear him. I can't see what his will is for my life. It's because you are in the way. You ever heard that scripture that, uh, not scripture, but that saying that they can't see the forest for the trees? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. 
-hmm. It's a forest. But you can't accept that it's a forest because all you see is these trees. I see a palm tree, coconut tree, almond tree. <laughs> You're seeing the trees. You're not seeing the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. When you take a look at God and you stop looking at you, you stop looking at the problem, you stop looking at the situation, and you take a look at God, he will open your eyes and let you know what the situation is. He'll let you know what you need to do in order for the problem to be solved. He'll even tell you, like he told me, I went to church one time and I said, God, I just can't take it anymore. I just don't, you know, just seem like testimony is boring. It just seemed like this, the people just don't love the Lord and, and look at her. She just keeps singing. You know, I just was dissecting every, this was me, the pastor's daughter. My dad got up to preach and I was like, oh, he's talking about faith again not knowing I had no idea that I was being scornful I had no idea that my feelings my thoughts what I wanted what I needed was being in the place of God and finally I got fed up with it I said God I just don't feel like I just don't feel like I'm hearing and feeling you I just I need your anointing. I just need you. I need you to help me. I just don't even feel safe anymore. I don't feel like there's any use of me even being here. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, you are supposed to be the example. If nobody else is the example, I put everything in you for you to be the example. If you feel like something could be done better as far as ushering, then you stand up there and usher. If you feel like a word can be delivered, you give the word. If you feel like testimony needs a song, sing the song. God said, I created you to worship me. And you're sitting here in the seat of the scornful. You going straight to hell in gasoline draws. When the Holy Ghost got through whipping my behind. <laughs> and everybody, it was funny because... The pastor said, does anybody <laughs> want to be saved? I was one of the first ones. I was supposed to have been up there helping people pray, pray them through. I'm on the altar. <laughs> Messed up. Huh. Why? Because I had a repentant heart. And I want you to know that God did hear me. He heard my sinful prayer. Because I came to him with a broken and a contrite spirit. I didn't come to him with arrogance. I mean, you could have bought me for two cents. I just felt so small. I, 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 I couldn't believe that God would just score me like that. Why would he? I mean, me, I was a child. But I needed correction. I needed that correction. And I'm giving you this because you need the correction. God is telling you all that you need to come up to another level. He's telling you that you're putting things before him. You're putting things or people before him. And he wants us to come up to another level. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that we have to present our body as a living sacrifice. Sacrifice. So that means holy and acceptable. What? Is that reasonable God. service? Unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's it. So that means even when you're tired, when you don't feel like it, when you feel like, God, I just, I can't take, I just feel like I just can't make it. I can't. What did the old folks used to say? The church is your what? Hospital. 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 Now, if you cough and sniffle and sneezing, the flesh in me is going to tell you to stay home, baby. Right. You get over that, okay? But call on the telephone and say, hey, can, can somebody put me on the altar? You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yep. If you just tired, dog, I'm dog tired. I just can't. Whew, or I'm frustrated. Or I'm disappointed. Well, not to a point where it's going to cause you to be afflicted, but you know your limitations and you know when you're testing God. That's what I'm saying. Right. Examine yeah, yourself. Say, There's a scripture. Say, in, huh? They say back in the, in the day, I'm, I'm pressing my way. Yes. It. There's a scripture right here. It says 2 Corinthians 13 and 7. And I want you to remember this. 2 Corinthians 13 chapter, the 5th through the 7th verse. 
2 Corinthians 13, 5 and 7. You don't remember nothing else I say tonight. I want you to remember this. It says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. So look yourself over. I'm not going to look at you and judge you. I want you to judge yourself and say, hmm, am I saved? Am I really saved? The Bible says, prove your own selves. Then prove it. Prove it to me. Prove it to yourself that you're saved. It says how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. If you are of a reprobate mind, you're not going to be able to prove anything. Okay. Number six says, but I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. So when you finish examining yourselves, you should be found mm -hmm. holy. Number seven, verse seven says, now I, now, now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. So even though we're in this fleshly body, be honest with God. Let him know exactly where you stand and then repent. A lot of people have a, a problem with forgiveness, with repenting. <clears throat> there was a young lady that came on the altar and she was like, pastor, I can't see. I can't see. My eyes just seem like they're getting worse and worse. And he prayed for her. He said, you feel better? Can you see now? She said, no, pastor, I can't see. After about the 10th time, everybody in the church was getting tired. <laughs> and he said, don't nobody move. You all need to be praying because these are demonic spirits. He said, I want everybody in here to be praying. And we was all like, oh, God, please, Jesus, let the lady see. God, please, Lord. I'll try, you know, it was that serious. It, it, and he kept praying for her. He was just not going to let that go. Do y'all remember that? I remember him praying for someone. Oh, like I remember hearing I was, about it. Well, we was all sitting there. We was tired. We were hungry. It was a Sunday morning. And this lady, she was mm -hmm. like, I just don't. Ain't nothing happening. That's what she said. He said, oh, well, I tell you what, here's the microphone. I want you to ask God to forgive you. And I want you to mean it because you are about to go to a very bad place if you don't. He said, God can't heal you because you're in sin. I was like, <clears throat> he said that out loud on the microphone. I'm telling you the same thing. God cannot heal you because you're in sin. He can't deliver you because you're in sin. He can't set you free because you're in sin. He can't solve your problem because you're in sin. He can't save your children because you're in sin. He can't fix that situation because you're in sin. He can't get you out the pit you're in because you're in sin. You can't be delivered from that habit that you've been trying over and over and over to quit because you're in sin. When you get a repentive spirit, what will God do? He will remember his promise and he'll do everything that he promised to do. He said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. That's Matthew 7 and 7. And that sums everything up. Everything you need is right there. There's nothing too hard for God. But God cannot move in an unrepentant heart. So we're going to pray right now. Yes. Father God, we come to you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this thank word you. on tonight. We just thank you and praise you and magnify you for uplifting us on tonight. We bind Satan on every hand that has come against us. Lord Jesus, we ask that you forgive us for every sin that we may have committed un yes. unknowingly, or knowingly, we ask you to forgive us, Lord Jesus. Help us, yes. deliver us, set us free. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we bind Satan on every hand that comes to try to afflict us in the name of Jesus. We bind Satan on every hand that comes to try to lie to us and tell us there's no help for us. 
all of our help comes from what? From the Lord. From you, Lord. And the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all and of all of these things shall be added to you. All we have to do is seek the Lord. God is waiting for you to Thank call you, on him. God is yes, waiting Lord. for you to seek him. He's waiting for you Thank to you, ask Jesus. him for the help that you need, to ask him help for deliverance, God. to ask him for Deliver to set now. you free, to heal your family. He's yes, waiting Lord. on you to humble yourself and come before him and put him before any and everything. And when you do that, God said, I will uplift you. I'll answer your prayer. I'll heal your body. I will deliver you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you for just thank letting you. this rest on a soft heart. We bind yes, every Lord. demonic spirit of the devil that comes to try to bring stubbornness or pride or rebellion in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just release your spirit to flow freely in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. And we praise you. We magnify you. We glorify Hallelujah. you. For you are God. Thank you for your word of revelation. Thank you, Thank you for your uplifting, Lord. Thank you for your strength. Thank you, Thank you Jesus, Hallelujah. for setting us free from the bondage of the enemy with the word of truth. Yes, As you said in your word, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And we thank you for the liberty to praise you. We thank you for the liberty to magnify you. We thank, thank you for the liberty to accept the healing, the deliverance. Thank in you. Jesus' name. Thank and we Jesus. shake every demonic spirit that's not like you. you. Loose and put it under our feet in the matchless name yeah. of Jesus Christ. We receive yes, the Lord. healing right now. We receive right now. deliverance right now. In right Jesus, now. Name. Jesus name. Jesus amen name. and amen. amen. Something amen. is happening on this amen. Zoom amen. tonight. Hallelujah. Something Hallelujah. is happening. Hallelujah. Jesus. I feel Thank those chains being broken. I speak to your family and I command them to be free in the matchless name of Jesus. Someone's been just dealing with trouble in your mind. I command freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Every chain that's been on your mind be broken in the name of Jesus. For he who the Son sets free is free indeed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on and receive it receive god's presence receive his anointing in the name of jesus thank you thank you thank you we magnify sister jenkins what you feel happening thank you jesus thank you jesus Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. Thank you, Thank Jesus. Jesus. Thank Glory to your name. That's my prayer for chains to be broken. That's my prayer for chains to be broken. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is here to uplift your spirit. Can we pray for the Clemens family right now in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus, just touch that family right now. Heal and deliver right now. Set free right now in the name of Jesus. We talk to the, we speak to every demonic force, every demonic spirit, and we command you to go in the matchless name of Jesus. To that spirit that is holding these dark secrets over this day family. I command every secret to be revealed. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 go in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. We dispatch your FBI agents, angels from the north, south, east, and west. In the name of Jesus. Seek me while I may be found. And we're seeking you, Lord Jesus. You said to ask, and we're asking for revelation. In the name of Jesus. We're asking for revelation. God, you are a man that cannot lie. And we bind every demonic spirit of deviance, of witchcraft, of darkness in the name of Jesus. And we speak life abundantly in the name of Jesus. Every deceitful and lying spirit, we command you to go to the outer pits of darkness. We let you pay in the name of Jesus. Every demonic spirit of rebellion, go in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Every demonic spirit of sickness, of restlessness. I see people on here that's not sleeping. And the, the Lord said in his word that he would give his people sweet sleep, sweet rest. Yes. Yes. And rest Thank in the name of Jesus. Peace. God would say that mother, 
God will keep us in perfect peace, perfect peace. but our mind has to be stayed on, on him. Yeah. When the enemy comes to bring things to your mind, you start pleading yeah. the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And I would be sitting here lying to you if I, if I told you that I never had the enemy come to me and try to bring those thoughts and memories. I had, I had flashbacks of every night, all 30 days that I was there with my husband and I saw them take my husband's life, all 30 days. Visions of what those doctors were doing when they were doing the wrong thing. But I had to ask God to take that from me and I had to ask God to forgive me and to forgive them. Once I walked in the, in the path of forgiveness, forgiveness, that's when the liberty came. That's when the healing came. That's when the peace came. That's when the restfulness came. Thank you, Chief. Pray for Chief. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Yes, ma'am. What'd you say? Pray for Corey's back. His back? Where yeah, he's is he? He's, he just came in. Okay, I want him to put his hand on his chest, put his right hand on his chest. And I want him to put his left hand in the small of his back. And I want you to put your hand on his head. In the name of Jesus, he's finding these things right now. Yes, Lord. Father God, we come to you right now in the message. Yes, name yes, of right now. Lord, we command your healing to take place. Right God, we now. praise you when we magnify you for a miraculous healing. God, you are the same God that yes, parted Lord. the Jordan River. You are the same God that parted the Red Sea. You are the yes. same God. You are the same God that opened the eyes of the blind man. You are the same God that unstopped those deaf ears. You are yes. the same God that spoke healing over the man that fell several feet dead to his death and spoke life to him. You are the same God that touched the young man that was in the casket and he came to life. God, yeah. you are the same God that is able to commence healing then. You're the same God right now. And we command yeah. healing in this yeah. heart, healing in this mind, and yeah. healing in this back. Yeah. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus. And we thank you for the healing and the uplifting. Thank you, everybody. In Jesus' thank name, we bind every demonic spirit of I darkness that comes to speak lies, that this is a consistent, ongoing, arthritic pain. We bind every demonic spirit of our writing. And we come against that demonic spirit. In the name of God, of God. God said, I come that you might have life and that more abundantly. And we command your healing to flow through his body. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank How's your back? Jesus. How does this back feel now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He said this this fine is just tight. Uh uh, uh. we not accepting that a little bit. We not I accepting that a little bit. You take those hands, those both of the lift yeah. both of those holy hands as high as you can to the Lord. Yeah. That tightness yeah. has to go it's in the name, of, name of, Jesus. of Jesus Christ. You're not accepting that tightness in the name of Jesus. Gotta go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you for Terry, your The Lord said, because of your faithfulness, because of you keeping your word, God's going to honor thank your you. prayer. He's going to honor you, your Lord. prayer. He thank said, you, because Jesus. you kept thank your God, word. Yeah. This Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Glory, glory, glory. You felt that spirit of rejection. You know, none of the other You came discouraged and disappointed. But God said, because of your faithfulness, He said, because of your trust in His word, He's going to answer your prayer. He's going to answer your prayer. He said, expect it speedily. Yes, Lord. He said, expect it speedily. Yes, Lord. expeditiously. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you for delivering. And I want right everybody now. on here to touch and agree. Thank you, Jesus. That yes, God Lord. is going yes, to bring to revelation who murdered her nephew. All right. He's going to bring it to revelation. It's going to be revealed and out in the open. And the people that are responsible are not going to get any rest. They're going to be so troubled. Mm -hmm. You're going to wonder, why are you telling me all that? 
We got a testimony. Sister Debbie said that pain that was in her back has been released, and that tightness, Debbie. Oh, hallelujah. Head, the mm. Lord said that tightness is being lifted. He said, Take your hands and wipe it off. He said, Thank Wipe you. it off. He said, That's a demonic spirit. That is a demonic <laughs> spirit. You, and Thank we find every demonic spirit, every word that has been spoken against her. We come against every demonic you, spirit Jesus. according Thank to you. Isaiah 54. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. For she is the righteousness of God. Oh, and the yes. righteousness you. of you, saith Thank the you. Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Y'all be making me cut up on here. I'm trying to be good. Oh, hallelujah. Bible Thank study. You. I, I try my best just to do the Bible study. Mm -hmm. Y'all be having me bring bring a revival mm -hmm. up in here. <laughs> well, I thank you because I need well, what we need. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We can use a revival. Hallelujah. 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 Do y'all feel that anointing? Just lift your hands up. Yeah. 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 Y'all feel that anointing? Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, God. But God said, you can do all things through me. Right. He said, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, yes, Jesus. Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Jesus. Hey, Debbie, did y'all hear that testimony? That Corey said that he's loose. All right. Yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Ooh, God, glory. glory to the name. You. Sister Debbie, you have a testimony before I get off of here? Oh, God. Thank yes, I do. Uh, I'm going to try to show my face, y'all. You don't have to show thank your you. face. Okay. Really quickly. Thank you, Lord. I came on right, right, right on time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been under uh, uh, emotional, mental attack by the enemy. Mm -hmm. Not having the strength to move, to function, to think, to do nothing. Pain all in my body, all in my body. And so I'm at a point where, you know, I'm not to give up. It's like throwing in the towel, like whatever, just whatever, you know. And so this morning, um, I got a, a message on my WhatsApp. First of all, I thought I deleted that app. I was trying to put more room on my phone. And the message was from a sister that I've never met. And her name was on the app was Elizabeth Neighbor in Orlando. I ain't never seen this woman. Nobody has my WhatsApp number except people in Africa and some of my family members. And on this app, <laughs> she was talking about mumbling and complaining and just being grateful for the place that we are, even though it may not be where we want it to be or where everything she was talking about. She even sent a song. She just talked into my life and then began to speak because she sent a recording. Don't even know me. She sent a recording and it just started breaking chains off of me. I started feeling lighter and feeling great, you know, feeling better. And so um, I, um, I texted and I said, how did you find me? How did you know me? And um, thank you, Lord God. She thank said, you. I don't. She said, the Holy Spirit sent me to you. Jesus. God won't let us give up. He won't let us give in. Jesus. No, he won't. When the enemy comes to us like a flood, we will never have to worry about being overtaken by him. Because no. he'll oh, send you back somewhere you. you don't even know. He puts your name and your face in somebody's lips and their heart, mm -hmm. and we don't even know. Thank I you. thank God that he never gives up on me. Oh, and so then God. when I come into the call, 
Oh my God, the Holy Spirit just took over my body. Oh, I had a catch in my back. Like Satan was like, yeah, uh -huh. well, I'm gonna hold on to this. But tonight God finished and he allowed it. See God, he denies everything this, the devil tries. He denies it, y'all. No matter how hard it gets, we got to just tough it through. And I thank yeah. God for you. I thank God for everybody on here tonight. That's my testimony. Glory I praise God. God. Thank, thank you, Lord God. Glory thank you, God. God. The thank pain you. is gone. My body thank don't hurt Jesus. no more. Oh, as soon as I got on this call, God. the pain, I lifted my hands up like you said, Adrian. I know that was for somebody else, but God said do it. And the pain yeah. left. It's thank gone, you. man. Thank it's you. gone. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you yes, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. I want you to know this is a time that we're in a gentle attack. See, the enemy can't afflict us physically. So he's asked God permission to touch our mind. Yes. You're not in this fight by yourself. You're not the only yes. person no, that's been going through this that's mental right. attack. I, I, I'm telling Amen. you, there have been times where I just, I want to go somewhere as old folks say and just sat down. Yes. Off yes. the grid. Just completely off the grid. Like, you don't have to oh. talk. I, I just break the phone. Matter of fact, I, I'm going to just drive till I run out of gas. Yes. And that's yes. the, that's that's the enemy. Catch a flight to nowhere. Just catch it. Use all your money. Catch a flight to nowhere. And nobody got to know you. You just. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Jesus. That's the devil. Amen. Yes. The Bible says first naturally, then spiritually. Think Amen. about that. In the animal kingdom, what does the lion do? He finds the weakest in the pack. And then he Amen. isolates that one. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And once he yes. gets the animal isolated from the pack, then he attacks um, and kills. Oh, him. my God. Oh, he can't no. kill me. So guess what you this just did day, tonight? This is the day, this is the day and the, and the age that I lost my brother Tony. Oh. Uh, at the same age I am today and the and and nine years ago I had put it on up because I was missing him and I couldn't understand why I was being pulled but then the, the a reminder came up that old devil Facebook reminded me <laughs> that you know that this was the day and his age was 56 and my brother other brother my oldest brother Silas uh Braxton his age was 56 and so Satan's been trying to talk to to me and I'm you know and I've been rebuking but you know the pulling he's fighting so hard and so I thank God for the saints tonight I thank and God you. that when we can't fight by ourselves that we thank got you. saints that, that work on our behalf yeah. hallelujah yeah. Oh, from the cloud of witnesses I thank God thank for y'all I thank God Jesus hallelujah. Thank God. it's like thank Bishop God. Uh, Gilbert Earl Patterson he said thank if God be for us whoever is yeah. against us don't count that's it. Thank yes. God. Thank yes. God. What did uh, Bishop God. Bradford say? Devil, you lose. I win. I win. Yes. Thank you. Again. Again. <laughs> Again. <Thank> you. <laughs> Sister Ava. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I couldn't speak at first, but I thank God for you. I thank God for each and every one of you on this line. And a lot of you know I haven't been to church in the last three weeks because it seemed like every Sunday the enemy has been attacking my body where I couldn't come to church. And then he started attacking my mind about my children because there's so much going on in my family. It seemed like the more I pray and ask God to move things in this family to bring us together as a family because it seemed like everything been happening. You know, one sister mad with the other two sisters, a brother mad with the sister. And I just got tired and I told God today to heal this family. I give yes. them all to him. 
There's nothing I can do. I'm not in control. And I had to make Cynthia remember that she is not in control. God is in control of each and every thing. Yes, is. So this tonight, everything you taught us tonight, it just hit home for me tonight. And I thank you, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank and you, I just Jesus. want you all to pray for me because I'm coming to church Sunday. I might be looking crazy, but I'm not going to let the devil. Oh, no, baby. In the name of I'm Jesus. I'm not going to let him. Do what the Lord tells you to do. Just say, yeah. Amen. And you know what? Lay your clothes out for Sunday today. Yep. Get it all yeah. ready. Try on every outfit because I already know what the enemy will try to do. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you're going to be there Sunday, and we're going to have a... Uh, I have a confession also. Yes, sir. Friday night church service. Friday night church service. I just clicked off a of Zoom and <laughs> uh, went in the room and just closed the door. Told Iris, I'm not going to church anymore. I'm done with church. Mm. Why, I do not know. Mm. So... Right. Saturday night, I prayed, and I prayed. I was discouraged about getting up singing. But came Sunday, when I stood up and looked out at the congregation, hmm. I told Iris when we left, I said, it looked pretty empty in there, didn't it? I said, that's because we is under, a, I mean, a huge attack. Hmm. I said, but you watch. And after that, I well, when I was looking out at the congregation, I knew that I was under attack with everyone else. And I wasn't going to accept it. When the lions go after the zebras, the whole herd is under attack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's the ones that give up, that mm -hmm. are isolated, that are destroyed. Mm -hmm. If we stay unified, that's it. Because you got to remember, like you said, Brother Daryl, you're not the only one going through stuff. Sister uh -huh. Debbie's not the only one. Sister Jake, you hear these testimonies? Did you uh -huh. hear mine? Uh -huh. oh, yes. I wanted to get in my car for no reason. I just felt like I, I had enough. <laughs> Brother Thompson, he, he his testimony that morning was mm -hmm. the same. See? He didn't want to come to church. The devil is a liar. He's uh, we're under attack. But you know what God gave me today? He said, for those of us who remain in place and on the wall, he said, not only is he going to bless us, because according to his word, if we are faithful over a few things, he'll make us ruler over many. Those over things many. that we have been desiring. The Lord gave me a word. He said that some of us are consumers. I wrote that down. He says, some of us are, here it is, some of the church people. And I'm like, God, why did you give me this? This just doesn't make sense with the lesson that you gave me tonight. But now I know why. He said, there are some saints that are consumers. They're just browsing to see what they can see. I just came for the program. I just came to see the choir. I, uh, they are CEOs. They come for Christmas, Easter, and other events. Mm -hmm. And then you have the customers that come only for uh, what you can give me for the for the ministry. Or well, the pastor said he gonna give us a good word on tonight. Or ooh, the pastor said he want to talk to everybody. I want to be there, hear what he got to say. They come as customers. Oh, it's gonna be an evangelist tonight. I want to come. And then you have those saints that God admires and loves that are the shareholders. You make an announcement for them to work. And they're the ones that show up. They're the faithful few. What do you need me to do? Usher, do you need me to take up the offering? Do you need me to sing in the choir? Do you need me to be in the congregation to celebrate Jesus with you? Those are the shareholders. So I ask you on tonight, are you a consumer, customer, or shareholder? Shareholder. Yep. Yeah. Now, I, I, I look, we didn't went over time. 7.30. Revival <laughs> Sunday night. 
God is going to move in a miraculous, powerful way at 6 p.m. I expect to see everybody there. I am supposed to spearhead these uh, um, revival fire Sundays. So I'm spearheading this revival on Sunday night and I'm coming packing and ready. We're going to destroy the devil and everything that he's trying. And I want you to invite your friends. Hallelujah. Invite your family. Invite your loved ones. Invite the sick, the afflicted. Like I said before, though, if you're coughing, sniffling, sneezing, call me and I'll put you on the altar via telephone. <laughs> we want to use wisdom. <laughs> When I want to use wisdom. Yes. I want to, I want, I want to use wisdom. Okay. What you decide to do other than that is your choice, but I want to see you there. I want to see you there. I want to see you there. And I believe that God is a healer. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. I'm not afraid of the enemy. I don't care what he brings. I'm not scared of him. Right. Thank you. Amen. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So when are we having Revival Fire? Sunday night. Sunday night. The first, the first Sunday night. It, isn't this Sunday night the first? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I see you all Sunday night at six o'clock. I'm going to be bringing the word. We're going to get down. We're going to roll our sleeves up. And we're going to get on that altar. We're going to seek God like never before. So you come ready, come ready. And it's not going, we're not going to be there all night because I know some of us have to work on Monday morning, but we are going to be seeking God. And I'm believing for an old fashioned revival. Yeah, I'm Lord. believing for old fashioned restoration. I'm believing Amen. for old fashioned deliverance. We're going to sing some Zion songs. We're going to welcome the Holy Spirit in. And I'm excited about what God's going to do. I'm excited. Amen. Amen. All right, you all.